Peyton Thorne will start the season as Auburn's quarterback. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. Thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day or maybe your second or third listen uh, due to the amount of shows we're putting out this week. Joining me for this special quick show is Daryl Dapperidge, Montgomery Radio Vet, hanging out with us. And Daryl, uh, based on all reports and pending announcements and announcements that may have already been up, uh, Peyton Thorne will be Auburn's starting quarterback, at least for game one. As we see it, it sounds like the announcement came earlier this week in a conversation that happened with Hugh Freeze in the quarterback room. And now, moving forward, uh, I guess the remainder of fall camp slash preparing for the season, Peyton Thorne will get some reps with the ones. I'm sure Robbie will still get some reps as well. Uh, of course, some packages designed for Robbie Ashford. But this is kind of what we saw coming over the last few weeks. Yeah, it, it is expected. But I want to make sure that we understand, everyone understands the reason why it's expected is not that there wasn't a true competition. I believe there was. Sure. And I truly believe that Robbie Ashford was in this thing all along. I think that why I'm not surprised or why we could read the tea leaves and see the writing on the wall, I think other than how the Zach Calzada situation got screwed up last year, yeah. when you go out and get a guy that has started at the Power 5 level, for two years in Big Ten country, you don't bring him in to sit. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not saying that it was a foregone conclusion. I'm just saying, in my opinion, Peyton Thorne would have had to really mess up to lose this job. And I think Robbie had to come and elevate and raise the bar to close the gap. I think he did. I think Robbie Ashford's gotten better. Sure. I hope and pray that Robbie Ashford handles this the right way because I think he's too valuable to this team, I still think, as others have said, there's packages uh, to be had for Robbie Ashford to get on the field. And look, if he handles this correctly, Zach, it's my opinion that the way Auburn and you freeze and Phil Montgomery could use Robbie Ashford, he could still get double digits in touchdowns. But what does this sure. mean for Peyton Thorne? It's a guy that's, you know, by all accounts, has led since he's got here on and off the field. I think that having that experience is invaluable. Let's just throw it out there. When's the last time Auburn had a quarterback that came back after playing two full years at the Power Five level? That was Bo Nix. Yeah. I mean, Bo Nix junior year. And the COVID year, you kind of consider that like a year and a half. But remember how good everybody felt going into the year in 2021, even though there was a new coaching staff, because we had a quarterback that was going on year three. Thorne hasn't been at Auburn for three years, but he's been playing major college football. This will be year three yeah. that he's doing that. I, I think that's got to be something to hang your hat on and, and make Auburn fans feel a little more comfortable going into the season. A third-year starter is a big, big deal. Yes. I mean, and, and we saw that with Stidham, right? He didn't start the full year at Baylor before he you know, went to the JUCO route and then eventually came back to Auburn. But, I mean, we've seen – what that type of experience at the quarterback position has led to. It's just hard to get a guy that started, you know, going on his third season. That's a rare thing to do because it's hard to start so early at power five level of football. Uh, Cause there's always going to be guys in front of you. And that's just how programs are run. But you know, this is the guy that, I mean, it seemed like as soon as he entered the portal, Hugh freeze made it very clear that he wanted Peyton Thorne. And this is what it looks like. Now you bring him in and look, I think Peyton Thorne was pushed by Robbie which is great. You know, I think Holden Gurner also was involved at some points throughout fall camp. And I think we talked about it. Competition's great. And I think Peyton Thorne may have been pushed a little bit more than he maybe thought he would have been coming in. I don't know that he hasn't said that. I'm just kind of reading between the lines here and giving props to Robbie Ashford. So now as far as what we should expect with Peyton Thorne, he will start against UMass. And I guess we don't know everything like, you know, if, if Auburn's up 28 nothing against UMass, which they probably should be, you know, do they give Robbie a big chunk of the second half? Does that then go to Holden Gurner? Because Robbie's going to be the packages guy, and he's going to have his role regardless of who's in at quarterback. 
I guess that's kind of the next layer of this onion that we've got to peel back. And I mean, we can speculate all we want, but that may just be a game plan thing, Daryl. It could be. I, I suspect that Thorne will get stuck with a little bit longer than most first string quarterbacks only because of the unknown. He came here in the spring. I think Auburn and, and the coaching staff really wants to see game action. He came here after the spring, you mean? Y yes, after the spring, yes. And so he wasn't here last year. He wasn't here during A Day. So game reps and what you see, what you have, I think he stays in longer than maybe perhaps mo most first-string quarterbacks do because they really want to get a taste and a feel for what they have. And I think from a package standpoint, you're not going to wait like you normally do with a traditional second-string quarterback to get Robbie Ashford in a game. It could happen on Series 1 in the right scenario. It could happen – the second series of the game, Auburn gets a turnover, takes over at the 30, boom, Robbie. I so I think it's going to be untraditional. I think they stick with Thorne longer because they want to see what they have. And I think Robbie Ashford enters the game earlier than a second string quarterback might. And yeah. also, you Freeze has gone on record. He's got a history. He's got a tradition of, okay, from game to game, he names a starter. This doesn't mean Thorne's the starter for the year. He is just the starter for game one. So he's going to have to incorporate Robbie to push Thorne, to see if there's a gap, to make sure Thorne's doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, you don't want a guy looking over your shoulder, but I just think it's going to be from a game to game for a while. And the only way to figure out what you have is maybe to let Thorne play a little bit longer. Yeah, I do think that's a little tricky because you got UMass, and then the next thing on your schedule is you go across the country to play Cal in a Power 5 matchup, and I just don't know if you'd make that switch then. I think it'd have to be pretty I think it'd have to be pretty egregious, right? I think Thorne right. would really have to drop the ball. I think you would have to probably make that switch if you were going to, which I'm not predicting this happening, but if you were going to make that switch, you'd probably have to do it after Cal going into Sanford. It's just my guess. Right, and the only way that happens, I don't think that'll happen either. I'm just saying from a game-to-game -game standpoint, publicly, that's what he's going to say. The only way that happens is if it's a disastrous first start for Thorne and Robbie yeah, Ashford yeah. comes in and lights it up, then you have a big decision to make. But I agree, you don't want to start playing musical chairs at quarterback. That's why I think the, the right way to handle this is to let them coexist and mesh in certain circumstances. Uh, if Robbie Ashford buys in to knowing that he's going to be able to put points on the board in, in certain packages, it's going to get touchdowns. I mean, he may have more. He may be second. I've heard some of your other guests predict that he may be second on the team in rushing yards. Or, Well, that would be phenomenal. So I, it's all about how the coaching staff tries to use him. And then more importantly, how he responds to that and how he lets himself be used, in my opinion. Yeah. and I. Um... I don't know. I, I expect the the whole rotation to be used more efficiently than we saw a year ago. Because, I mean, a lot of people forget, but like Robbie didn't win the job going into week one last year. TJ Finley did. And then we saw Robbie come in a lot. And then ultimately TJ Finley got hurt and Robbie took it over from there. But um, I, I do think Robbie will be used. And let's discuss what that usage rate could possibly look like in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off, hence why we're naming starting quarterbacks for week one. But FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long because right now, if you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets back every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get bonus backs for every victory. And you can use those bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. FanDuel's got a ton of stuff so be sure to check it out at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Daryl Daprich joining us for this quick special bonus episode of Locked On Auburn. Robbie's role this year, um, we talked about this with Jake Crane yesterday, or earlier today rather, Daryl, about, you know, I kind of asked him the question. He said 10 to 15 snaps a game when you talk about everything. And he thinks Robbie's going to line up at positions other than quarterback. I'm a little skeptical of that, just being honest. I don't really see that happening because he's been so adamant at saying a quarterback based off of, you know, just folks that I've talked to. And I don't blame him for that at all, by the way. But 
I think 10 to 15 is a lot. I think seven or eight is kind of where I'm sitting right now, but I could be wrong. I, well, you know, it's going to be game to game. Um, against Agreed. a team like UMass, I would suspect it was going to be 10 to 15 because they're going to be able to utilize him a lot. And will he come in as a traditional second string quarterback in the third quarter when things are out of hand? That yeah. That's going to be the, the question mark. You know, we know he's going to be used in packages, allegedly, but let's say it's 35 nothing to start midway through the third quarter. Does then Thorne sit and Ashford play the rest of the third quarter, thereby getting 10 or 15 more snaps? I don't know. This is what I this is what I see. Okay. I see Peyton Thorne getting probably 85% of the snaps for the first three quarters of the game against UMass. I see Robbie getting about 15% of those snaps for the third quarter. And then I could see a scenario where they both sit for the whole fourth quarter and they turn it over to Garner because let him get reps, let him get two or three possessions in the fourth quarter. Robbie's done his thing. Yeah. Peyton Thorne's done his thing. And that's where I could see this kind of playing out. Now, against Cal on the road, if it's a close game, then maybe Robbie gets eight to ten snaps. But I just think if Auburn moves the ball at all and gets inside the red zone, gets inside the 15, gets inside the 10, and let's just say they are gashing Cal. Let's say they're running it right down their throat with read option and Peyton Thorne's not having to put it up that much. Well, absolutely you would incorporate Robbie in that situation to pull it and go around right in untouched or whatever because the running backs are gashing Cal's defense. Every game scenario could lead for different percentage of snaps or plays for Robbie, just depending on how the game plays out. Yeah, yeah. As far as expectations for the season, Daryl, now you and I expected Peyton Thorne to, to be QB1 this year. As soon as he transferred from Michigan State, like you said a second ago, like you, you don't leave that situation to sit on the bench. And it, it appears that, that at least to start the season, that will not be the case. So... We both kind of expected this going into it. Does this change your expectations for the season at all for Auburn after hearing this news? It does not if it's handled appropriately. I got to be careful. If if Robbie responds to this correctly and he is able to be used as a very integral piece of this offense with how dynamic his legs are, yeah. and this does not divide the locker room, and cause some problems in the locker room with this the, the naming of this quarterback. And I'm not saying it will. We just know previously other teams, you get factions of groups that want this guy, and then you get factions that want this guy. As long as this locker room stays united and Robbie buys in, it does not change what I think the ascent of this football team is. I think the floor is 7-5 and five and the ceiling is 9-3 and because this is exactly how I expected it to all play out. Yeah, I, I think I'm there with you. I think I'm there with you. Um, it's really going to come down to that fourth game to me is at Texas A&M. And I think how the quarterbacks are used and how often the quarterbacks are used in that game is probably going to be like what this coaching staff thinks is their best chance to win because that is going to be a crucial, crucial game. Hugh Freeze's first game back in the SEC playing against an SEC opponent. It's big. It's big, and you're just not going to like waste any potential reps or snaps or any kind of opportunities. You're going to put it all out there at a Kyle Field in College Station. Daryl, you will be back with me on the show tomorrow. But in the meantime, how can people check out everything you've got going on and give you some love, brother? Just follow me on Twitter, DAP6410. Love interacting in the Discord, and I'm on numerous shows throughout the week in the Auburn area just as a guest. Yes, uh, be sure to follow all of our written content, auburndaily.com, and hit that subscribe button. We'll be back tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.